Okay, well, it is uh, seven after, so we can go ahead and get started. Uh, your name is Robert, correct? I just want to make sure I'm yes. calling you the right name. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, we're going to do the usual format, names, pronouns, and the icebreaker question. Um, the icebreaker for today will be very matching for the book's theme. Uh, do you believe in ghosts? Mm -hmm. So I'll go first. My name is Jonathan. My pronouns are he, him, and I'll say yes, I do believe in ghosts. I'm not sure if I believe in like hauntings and possessions, but I do believe in like spirits roaming the earth. So, uh, which one of you would like to go first? Um, I'll I'll go. This is Michael. Uh, also, Hello. he him pronouns. Uh, I'll say I do. I do believe in ghosts, um, but I've never had like a ghostly experience as much as I have like always always wanted one. Especially as a kid, I wanted to like like feel feel special and feel like I was like touched by the magical or spiritual <laughs> world in some way um, and that, that has never happened but I still believe I guess okay nice and then uh, I'm Robert he, him pronouns I say yes into the energy that is sentience uh, manifesting itself in a variety of different ways even when like our corporal form does not hold on to the energy in the same way, that energy needs to go somewhere. Um, at the same time, I think if ghosts manifest in themselves in the way that we depict them via media, there'd be a lot more haunted white people, to be honest. <laughs> and <laughs> that seems that, like if some friends are not being haunted in the way they should. So that gives me the indication that ghosts don't have as much power as I would like them to, nor as much as we like depict them having. <laughs> That's a good point. I totally agree with that. <laughs> okay, so we can go ahead and get started with the book meeting. Um, what did we all think of the taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas? It was taking something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no, go ahead, Michael. Oh, I, I was going to say, I think it's probably not my favorite book that we have read. Um, mm -hmm. But it, I don't, it, it was interesting. Um, I haven't read a young adult novel in a long time, so mm -hmm. um, I may be like partially biased by that. Mm -hmm. um, For me, it, was, it felt like it was like a sequel to a book I never haven't read yet. Like, oh, like I just like the third book in the series. Like I <laughs> was supposed to have already known Jake for a long time and understood the ecto mist that he's been talking about for 35 million years. Every other page was, oh, the mist. Oh, the colors. Oh, the, I mean, the world. He was just like, he was everywhere and nowhere and just so overwhelmed with so many feelings. And I understand that it's teen angst, but it was like teen angst plus the description of all these other worldly, all the dead world and then the dead bodies I see everywhere I go. I was like, I was never, you just drop into a world without like any explanation. I get it. And they tried to like, piece that in throughout like oh yeah and then it was just that it taught me back in the day yeah yeah I'm like ah, but I don't at this point I'm already so many pages in I like already just suspended my disbelief didn't really care about how he got the powers who didn't add to my understanding to suddenly go to the uh, little voodoo shop and do all sorts of stuff I don't know <laughs> <laughs> my god <laughs> Yeah, I, I will definitely agree. I think I've shared before, I don't typically gravitate towards young adult novels. Um, and honestly, this book is probably one of the most exemplary reasons why. Um, I just feel like it doesn't really work for me. I wanted to like the book. I like some of the ideas. And I, I, I do agree with the two of you. I think there are some good things going on, but um, it definitely felt unfinished or not explained deeply enough for my liking. Um, and I'm also curious, when reading the excerpt in the back of the book, do you believe it's an accurate depiction of the story we get? Let me, wait, do you have the description title? I don't think I read the excerpt on the back of the book. I yeah, did. <laughs> no, I did audiobook for this one. I, I, I did yeah. have to listen twice. because I found was... a PDF, so I also don't have the back of the book. Oh. Do you, do you have it? What does it say? Let me pull it up. I don't have it in front of me. Just a sec. Okay, the excerpt is, a 16-year-old Jake Livingston sees dead people everywhere. 
but he can't decide what's worse, being a medium forced to watch the dead play out their last moments on a loop, or being at the mercy of racist teachers as one of the few Black students at St. Clair Prep. Both are a living nightmare he wishes he could wake up from, but things at St. Clair start looking up when the arrival of another Black student, the handsome Alistair, for the first time, romances on the horizon for Jake. Unfortunately, life as a medium is getting worse. Though most ghosts are harmless, and Jake is always happy to help them move on to the next place, Sawyer Doom wants much more from Jake. In life, Sawyer was a troubled teen who shot and killed six kids at a local high school before taking his own <laughs> life. Now he's a powerful, vengeful ghost who has plans for Jake. Suddenly, everything Jake knows about Dead World goes out the world, goes out the window, as Sawyer begins to haunt him. High school soon turns into a different kind of survival game, one Jake is not sure he can win. I mean, yes, accurate, also a lot for a <laughs> synopsis yeah. of a um, yeah. But I also don't think it's like, yeah, yes, Jake is like, by definition a medium and that a person that mm -hmm. can observe both spaces, but he barely helped anyone the whole <laughs> Yeah. He sort of helped River, kind of, but River <laughs> mostly helps herself. And the rest of the time he's just whining about, oh yeah, there's a ghost over there. Oh, there's a ghoul over there. Ooh, the wraiths. Here they come. <laughs> it's just more more tormented than mediuming than most of the time. I do that was I no, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I would say I do kind of wish that I, I had read that before I read the book. Um because <laughs> I, I think um Robert made a comment about the like world building, feeling like we kind of got dropped into it. Mm -hmm. uh, but even I'm I'm really glad I like went through it twice because there's so much that I like it. It made more sense going through the second time because I did not for the longest time I thought everyone was having these like same experiences that Jake <laughs> did and that like everyone <laughs> saw ghosts everywhere. And I was just, like, this is a really kind of like fantastical place and everyone is I, just, every, I like everyone to a ghost is school or like a magic school like oh it'd be sick to die in little pe and he keeps dying over and over like oh this is like a magic school people like die and they wake back up and like you know yeah i very much understand that. <laughs> that, that that would have helped me um i don't know that i to like answer your original question though jonathan i don't know that i think that that synopsis is like the best description of the <laughs> mm -hmm. of the book i don't know that like i really found the teachers being no, she was explicitly. She was calling him a slave, and she didn't do anything. Oh, and it? the principal was like, "Oh, you stabbed us other student," which he stabbed him through the hand with a pencil. And it's like, "Oh, you started it." It's like, "Oh my god!" Like, yes, admin and teachers in general are often aloof in terms of racial conflict. But at the same time, like, I don't know. It just it felt a bit contrived, even being a black person who's been a black the black student in a white school. It's like. Yes, this happens all the time. And also, the I don't know. I, 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 I am not in a space where the teachers are on the same team as the racist student. I like dealt with racist students, but not racist teachers and students at the same time. So I guess I can't really be the, the audience of Atlanta queer Black experiences. Um, but it just felt like, I don't know, I, I think racism and prejudice and uh, bigotry show themselves in much more insidious ways. And I think the more that we have these kinds of examples of what racism is, mm -hmm. the more that it, I think, excuses and others racism from what the actual experience that people of color have to deal with nine times out of 10 in terms of microaggressions in the workplace, at school, so and so forth. Mm. I agree. I mean, I, I think the excerpt from the back of the book promises a lot of drama that I think we don't really get. <laughs> Um, and that's why I picked it. It sounded so dramatic and like fantastical, but we don't get any of that, in my opinion. And also, I mean, I don't read a lot of like medium themed horror books, but the ones I have read, there's always a grander reason why the character has those abilities. Mm -hmm. And I feel like yeah. Jake, it's never explained why he no. just kind of has them and does nothing with it. Um, I think the story would have been a lot better had Jake have been like a ghost whisperer type of medium where he helps ghosts cross over, but he mm -hmm. never does that. He just kind of runs from his powers. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, that touches on something else. There was a character in the book, Miss Josette, who was his media mentor. I would have loved to see her play like a bigger role. I feel like for someone as inexperienced as Jake, he definitely needs that kind of person in his life. Mm -hmm. 
but we only interact with her once. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was so strange and like such a missed opportunity for him to like grow. Um, do either one of you notice that with the Miss Josette? No, era? absolutely. With like, okay, yeah. she's got something like <laughs> magical Negro whisperer for five seconds. Yeah. Oh, young Padawan, you must lose your powers and tell him to leave. And then she, she leaves. You know, <laughs> ridiculous. I did. You, you made a mention about um, it like kind of feels like Jake is like running, running away from his powers. Do you think that in any way relates to... I mean, I don't feel like he's running, running away from his queerness. He kind of is. Um, but do you do you think maybe there's like some some relation there? Is like part of part of queer experience is like you have to. Well, I wouldn't say have to, but for for most of us, we like run away from it at some level for, you know, some some extended period of time, especially during our developmental years. Do you think maybe that that could be like part of the reason the author included something like that and didn't make it more more medium related? I'm sure that's what his thought process was. That's a good thought. I I didn't think of that, but it does make sense. But I don't know if I would necessarily say I think that Jake is running from his queerness. It almost seems like he doesn't know he's queer until he meets Alistair. Um, And that I guess that can reflect some queer people's experiences. I mean, I guess until you have your first crush, you don't know what you like. I I don't know. But uh, that's a good point. I didn't think of that. And I, I want to circle back to something Robert said earlier. He said uh, that he was one of the few people in like a PWI's predominantly white spaces. I'm curious, does anyone else have that same history? Like, I don't. So reading this was kind of like, I don't want to say shell shock because I know these are experiences that people of color do have, but I just couldn't relate to that aspect at all. Uh, um, did you I mean, I, I do because I'm from like a... I'm I'm from a state that is like upper 90s percent white, but um, you know, again, I'm I'm very fair skinned. I'm in the place that I live now. I am I am essentially white passing. Where I grew where I grew up, I was not. Um, so I do I I do kind of get that, but I am I am curious since you mentioned that. Like I find it strange for this to be set in the suburbs of Atlanta, which is like one of the mm-hmm. blackest cities in the whole country. Um, mm-hmm. And have Jake be the only black character outside of his family and and Alistair for for the entire book. Like it just it seems not not real to me. Or like why why intentionally choose and mention so many times that it's in Atlanta and not just say like like I, I don't I don't know a, like a very white city off the top of my head. But like why why not why not put it somewhere else where that would make a little a little bit more sense? Or did that did that stand out to you at all? Yes. Uh, I, I Honestly, I mean, at least in my mind, my reading experience, I feel like I only really paid attention to the setting being in Atlanta once. After mm-hmm. that, I kind of got lost for me. So I guess I wasn't continually thinking about that. But now that you mention it, I know that the um, Alistair's whole family and possibly even his area is considered to be racist. It would have made more sense to me had they been switched where they live. Like if Alistair, I mean, not Alistair, if Sawyer lived in the neighborhood that Jake lives in where it's predominantly white people who are racist and then vice versa for Jake. Um, yeah. Yeah, that would have made more sense to me now that you mentioned that. Since we're, men- since we're mentioning Jake and Sawyer so much, did you notice any other similarities between the two characters? Hmm. I have to be honest, I mean, this isn't... From that this is- <laughs> um, uh, like horny for each other like it was weird like they were i don't know they were like angry like oh i hate you i hate you like ooh, you're like ooh. There was, it was like weirdly like flirty angry stuff going on i mean mostly sawyer at jake but sawyer like wanted to like eat jake and also like sleep with <laughs> jake at the same time it was kind of a lot there um personality wise i don't know i mean they both have like, so much angst and Situation. I'm sure they wanted to parallel some of their experiences with reclaiming their own queer identities and yada yada yada. Um, and Sawyer having no sort of network to fall onto to support him through that experience, while Jake has the brother and has the mom and has these friends at school. Um, but I don't know. I guess other than like Sawyer having been like actually uh, or sexually assaulted. Uh, pushing him to another 
point of uh, self-harm. I guess they, they are very similar characters in that they all both were kind of undeveloped and like, oh, we're queer and we're depressed. And one is black. <laughs> This is my second time reading, and my first time reading, I didn't really notice any similarities at all. As I read it again this time, I picked out a lot. I mean, I think of the relationships between them and their mothers, them and their siblings, them and their classmates. Um, there's just so much there that makes them parallel to each other. I think the only real difference is how they cope with those different issues they have in their life. I mean, we know that Sawyer, of course, commits a school shooting, while Jake does not. And I do kind of wish that the author would have played with those similarities more. Um, did you notice any similarities, Michael, or did you not really pick up any of those when you read the book? Um, so, some of like the family dynamics, definitely both like the single mother. Um, I was I was a little disappointed. I don't think we hear anything about Alistair's father, but I was a little disappointed that we get mm -hmm. two like very, very main characters. And it's like, oh, my dad ran away. And then I was I also gay, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, which is, you know, uh, quite, I won't say quite frequently, but seem, seems to be a narrative quite often. Um, but I, I did notice that similarity, but in, in the sort of like distance from the really the only place that they're able to find a lot of peers, uh, or at least that we're, we're given that they find a lot of peers, which would be in school. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there, there are some in there. I don't think I, I picked up on quite as many uh, as you did, though, Jonathan, or didn't really, maybe I just didn't want them to be the same because we know that Sawyer is, like, such, I, I don't I don't necessarily want to say evil because he, like, very clearly has a lot of mental health issues that I think contribute to everything that he does. Um, but that there's just, like, a lot that Sawyer, like, needs to, it's like stabilize and, and find a balance on. I don't think Jake necessarily has has those same those same types of issues. Or if we're like supposed to see a parallel between them, Jake's Jake's issues don't seem as serious as Sawyer's because he's not running around murdering anyone. <laughs> Since we are talking about the characters' families, do you think the book makes any sort of commentary on the plight of a single mother? I mean, they both are. But I think it's not about either mom. So it's like, yes, like they're talking about single motherhood I, as a thing, but I don't know if they like make any actual statements other than like, oh, I'm just busy and like your father, like I can't do anything to stop your father because blah 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 blah. Like it's not like a, a tired single mother trope in my opinion. I as as someone who grew up in a in a single mother household, I, I felt like it kind of did. Um that and I, I think in both stories, like Jake Jake's family seems to be like I I don't want to say like rich, but they seem to be like pretty, pretty well off. They are like living in the suburbs. They have like a whole house. Jake mentions a couple of times about like neighborhood being like gentrified. His mom has a six figure job. Um, but um, at the same time, she's like, she's gone all, all the time to like make those things happen for her sons. Um, and then Sawyer, on the other hand, I feel like we see like, I don't want to say the opposite side of that, but like, you know, what, what is maybe sometimes like the other side of the single mother trope is like, oh, if, you know, she's not like gone working all the time, then, you know, she's just like, oh, I like don't know what to do. And I just like hope that my son is like bonding with like the nearest male available mm -hmm. and like always bringing boyfriends in and out and like mm -hmm. not not really stable. Um, so I, I I kind of saw both of those as like some some of like the stereotypes we get about single mothers and don't. I would have liked to see, I don't want to say a little bit more depth, but like, I think, I think for each of the moms, something outside of like, I work all the time or like, I'm, yeah. I'm like boy crazy and don't know what to do with my son. Uh, <laughs> she, 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 yeah. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Did you, since, since you brought up the question, did you, did you have any, any thoughts on the, the single mother storylines for either of them for Sawyer or for Jake? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know if I would say the book is like purposely trying to make a commentary on the plight of a single mother, but I do think we get both sides of, of the single mother trope, the single mother who works too often and provides, I guess, financially but not emotionally. 
am a single mother who just, I think, doesn't know how to deal with being a single mother. So she's never there emotionally or financially. Um, but then again, I, I don't have any real life experience. I wasn't raised by a single mother, so I don't know how that dynamic feels. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do think the book is trying to explore that. Um, since we're talking about Sawyer's mother, there's a part where the book states that Sawyer's mother took him out of therapy because she was too embarrassed uh, to have mm -hmm. a child in an inpatient care. Did you notice that? Did you, I guess, interpret that as embarrassment or was it like a financial struggle? Because Sawyer does point out his mother's a waitress. So I don't think she could really afford inpatient care. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly just assumed that because Sawyer was a minor that they had, like, sorry, very, I, it's probably really loud. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I just assumed that, like, based on their financial status and the fact that they, like, live in the woods in a, a literal shack, that he was probably on, like, government-funded health care, so it wouldn't be an issue mm -hmm. for her. Or ordered, uh, what should we call it? Care, so it wouldn't be at cost to them. But I, I don't, I, I think I just maybe like had the assumption like, oh, like they're, they're poor, they're not paying for this. No, they weren't paying. Yeah, because it was but, after the suicide attempt. So I figured it was just like a requirement. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know that. But now, now that you mentioned that, like maybe, maybe that could have been, could have been part of it. Do you think that that, that, that was part of it? I think it's a strong possibility. I guess more so I'm asking because I think that moment for me brings up the possibility that maybe Sawyer's mother does care about him more than Sawyer understands. And he makes a lot of assumptions about her. So he doesn't even, he doesn't consider the possibility that there are other reasons as to why she's doing what she does, um, which I guess that's pretty common for a child. I mean, not having adult experience, you wouldn't understand certain adult decisions, but, um, but yeah, I, I think, I mean, you guys have a good point that it probably is government funded health insurance. So that would obviously help with that. But I That's mean, a, a lot of a lot of people reading may not may not realize that or or add that. So that mm -hmm. I don't know. Now 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 that you mentioned, it, I'm not sure. There's I I put like my own you know assumptions and and lived experience into there, but um, that may that may may not be the case. This is I guess, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to say this properly. Um. There is an, uh, an interview that I saw uh, by Ryan Douglas, the author, where he says he intentionally wrote Sawyer as evil, like essentially born evil. And then his his uh, struggles kind of exacerbate his evilness, so to speak. <laughs> did you, I guess, upon first meeting Sawyer, did you interpret him as being evil or misunderstood? I wanted to hope it was not lazy writing. I feel like writing an evil character is just such lazy. Mm -hmm. Writing, yeah, especially yeah. for a young age. <laughs> unless, unless you're writing a kind of like Disney movie, and even those Disney villains like still have depth and usually have some sort of rationale. Sawyer, I didn't see Sawyer as wholly evil. I, I mean, school shooter was like okay, like there's gonna be some sort of rationale, but I just think he's just underdeveloped, not really like holistically evil. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I also don't know that I would have like ever interpreted him as evil and like hearing the author say that and then yes. knowing <laughs> how how much like explicit narrative we get about Sawyer having like such strong and deep mental health issues mm -hmm. and just like the uh, violence put on him yeah and a lot of like being being a victim of sexual abuse and then like you know also being like physically and socially isolated from everybody uh just, like I don't it's too it's too I, I attributed everything bad that Sawyer did to like his his environment and what Absolutely. and what had happened to him and did not in any way assume that he was like born born, born, born evil. evil. Yeah, but, and then to say <laughs> born evil and then then also stack all that other stuff on top. Like it doesn't feel mm -hmm. necessary for me for you to say like born born evil and then add add all those other things on. I think born evil would make more sense if Sawyer was like you know, like grew, grew up in the suburbs and you know, like had no no family issues and then still turned out to be you know this like really really violent murderous person but because of the way that we or because of the character development that we get for Sawyer I don't I don't want to like give him that narrative of born evil because it's not like not fair at all for all the things that have happened to him but 
I don't. I, I, uh, I agree. Uh, <laughs> I, totally I also agree. this is this is one of the one of the books too where like I, you know, a, a lot of times you will like send send stuff in the chats and I I really like like dig into some of that stuff and I didn't mm -hmm. do any extra research this time. I think I did see that this was <laughs> I think Brian Douglas's first novel, if I'm correct. Yes. Um, like out outside of that, I didn't like I didn't do any research other than like see that a picture of him and assume that he was, I, I guess I, I assumed he was gay. Um, and I think I saw that he is black. Watch that be really funny if he's not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, di I didn't like do any, any digging outside of that. So that kind of throws me, throws me for a little bit of a loop when you say that, but what do you, what, what did you, what did you think about that when you, <laughs> when you read that? I was very surprised. I mean, in my own readings, the, the first time and this time reading the book, I thought that Sawyer was incredibly sympathetic. I mean, I honestly felt bad for him. Of course, I'm not trying to condone what he did, obviously, but I just felt incredibly bad for him. I thought he was a character that had a really like rough go of life. Um, I thought in a lot of ways he was misunderstood. I thought in a lot of ways the people responsible for his care weren't doing it to the best of their abilities. Um, and that's kind of what flipped the switch into like making him this uh, the school shooter. Um, but I I don't agree. I don't think that Sawyer, at least in my opinion, comes off as purely evil at all. Um, and that leads me into another thing. When I read the reviews for the book, a lot of people were angry that Sawyer was sympathetic and not purely evil. Do you think the book would have been strengthened in making him purely evil? I know that we both we all agree that like it would have been lazy writing, but. What do you think of that? That anger of having this character do something so awful be sympathetic? Um, I'm I'm not sure, but now that you mentioned that, that like just further strengthens my other comment. Like he's not I don't maybe Ryan Douglas says he is, but like you if someone was written to be so like evil, they wouldn't have any any remorse or yeah. or feelings yeah. or care or consideration mm -hmm. for anybody. Um, like it just, it doesn't make sense to have any of that sympathy unless you're using it for self gain, which I don't think Sawyer is in this case. Like it doesn't make sense for him to be, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know. Now, now you're making me like question, question everything I assumed and like had author, developed yeah. about, uh, Sawyer and I had, yeah. And, and about the author. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. What, what did you, how, how did you react seeing all that? Um, it was disappointing, I guess, to say the least. But to be fair, I mean, I know that in more recent years, we have had a lot of real-life school shootings. So I understand people's anger of uh, about an author trying to sympathize someone that does something as horrible as that. But I think in real life and in literature, we have to understand that characters like this, or I should say people like this, uh, tend to have a lot of mental health struggles. And while I don't think that Ryan Douglas is shoehorning any of uh, any of Sawyer's struggles in there to condone what he's done, I think it's just important to understand his backstory. Um, and I think a lot of people don't have the willingness to understand people or characters um, like Sawyer. Um, so, I mean, the anger about that makes sense in some ways, but I don't, I don't agree with it. And I think, I think to our point earlier that if Ryan Douglas would have just made Sawyer purely evil, it would have kind of ruined the whole book for me because the strength of the book is Sawyer's backstory and is Sawyer's, uh, I don't want to say like turn to madness, but his, <laughs> his, his explosion, I guess, made a lot more, it felt more impactful to me having read his struggles and his life story. Yeah. I am, I am curious, um, as, as we talk about some of the stuff about Sawyer, do you think there's a reason that he like Ryan Douglas made the choice for Sawyer to be to be a school shooter? Like it it feels like very a very specific choice. Um, like Sawyer could have been he could have been a kleptomaniac. He could have been like a car thief. He could have I don't I don't school shooter is like really really intentional specific stereotype that we have uh, of like you know like the the lonely uh, most of the time almost always guy. It's like misunderstood or like maybe kind of like fall, falls into some some other sort of like like isolated stereotype. Um, 
and I, I don't know, maybe maybe that is part of like the appeal as a young adult novel. Not that um, no, I wouldn't say like every young adult wants to like relate to a school shooting, but even in like mm-hmm. I I work for a large urban school district and we had like three, four school shootings last year. Granted, none this school year, but I mean, like a considerable amount last year. And I know I won't speak for Robert, but he works for a different large urban school district um, that also had mm-hmm. multiple school shootings last year. Oh, no, I don't know that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess fair. I mean, yeah, we're still in a world where we have to deal with lockdown drills and all that sorts of stuff. We had our lockdown drill last week as well. For, I teach third grade. And so we had to practice getting these third graders to stop joking around and talking, treating everything as a joke. Like, hey, if, and I also teach in open classrooms. So like, I have a door, thankfully, but like the top of, I don't have four walls. So if you really want to, someone wanted to get in my classroom, they just have to climb over the wall and get in. Like, it's not like anything I can do about that. So we, we teach in a time where it's not safe to be a student or a teacher. And that's what you just have to deal with. Um, and I think, again, lazy writing to just have like, okay, he's white and gay and different. So he's going to get his violence out by being a school shooter and shooting people that didn't do anything like River. That was so, I, I don't get that. Other than why get it now? He's like, oh, Sawyer is just sort of just evil, just evil to be evil. But I think, again, that's lazy writing and storytelling. Like, what does that, who does that serve? Also, what was the point of River other than for an example, for, I guess, to the back of the book to make sense. <laughs> if you don't have River, then the back of the book makes zero sense because he doesn't help us with a single ghost. Um, he just creates more ghosts. Also, he, like, lets Sawyer possess him and murder his uncle. I'm just like, <laughs> there's so many things that happen in this book that make no sense. <laughs> like, oh, I can't let you hurt Alistair, so just possess, share, take my body and possess me and just go make some, do some crimes. Just, like chaos and I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I know Robert's comment just jumped from like all, all, all over. Just, all just over, chaos but, of the book. Yeah. That's okay. I guess while while we're talking about Alistair, what do we think of Alistair's character as a whole? Um I'll I'll make a confession that the first time I listened to the book I did not realize Alistair was black. Oh. And I envisioned <laughs> him as like a uh, like pasty white boy with blue hair. Blue even Ooh, though it says mo- multiple times <laughs> in the book that Alistair is not not white I, I did like what you sent, and I, I was honestly surprised when you start the meeting with, like, do you like brownies or cupcakes? Oh, um, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I, I agree with your, like, uh, your interpretation that Alistair is, like, very, you know, like, manic pixie dream boy, just, like, Very every... Disney Channel original movie cr- crush boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just yeah. trying trying to fulfill everything <laughs> else or not after that, Jake. that uh you know Jake Jake might want and or Ryan. be or be dreaming of. Um yeah, I don't know. Just it felt it felt very like I don't I don't want to like steal Robert's uh No, please do. Thing yes, it did feel very like like Disney Channel original movie, kind of like like this character like swooping in and mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know that he added for me. I don't know that Alistair added a lot to the story aside from just being like uh, a way to like make Jake experience his his queerness and his um, the second time reading through his like his blackness and connection to being both of those things um, in in a way that we like get to actually and um, like see see develop. Um, I just I don't know. Alistair to me almost felt like a reason for for Jake to to be gay in the book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. What do you what What did you think? I knew I knew you had some strong strong <laughs> thoughts about uh, Alistair in the Discord. Yeah, I I guess to to uh, to mimic all of you guys. I mean, I I agree that he does feel very much Disney Channel original book character, um, and he's definitely a manic pixie. I feel like. The back of the book promises more of like a romantic element between Alistair and Jake because he's mentioned by name in the book excerpt, but he's not really present for most of the story. He only is in it for like maybe two or three scenes. Um, And even those scenes, I felt like they weren't really romantic. I mean, yes, there is the moment where they go on their first quote unquote date and there is the moment in the car. But outside of that, I didn't really understand where all these 
romantic feelings came from, especially from no. Alistair's perspective, because Jake doesn't even really talk to him much. Alistair no. is the one like leading all of their interactions. So what what would make uh, what would make Alistair develop feelings for Jake? That didn't really make sense to me at all. Yeah, and I, that's more part of the book that I do believe. He's like, you have a crush on me? Why? I'm like, yeah. Jake, good question. <laughs> I don't get it either. Yeah. He's like, oh, you, you you talk to ghosts. That's a good reason to cry. I'm like, are you sure, Alistair? That's, that's good enough reason. I think there was, I, I don't know that I caught this either time, but I think Robert made a comment earlier that like, there's a point where Alistair says like, oh, Jake, your body's like so hot or something. And I don't know that we got any. No any like real detail that like would i don't know like put put uh you had like so much like description of jake's body to like even elicit a comment like that very skinny lanky he's shorter than benji no i thought he was taller than benji no benji's a, oh. benji's like a couple inches taller than him isn't that not the, yeah. anyway i don't remember um <laughs> But he can he can manifest weapons with his ghost and <laughs> his ancestral sword and his astral projection. This is the only thing. I did not care about the physicality or logistics of this book, but that's neither here nor there. Exo mist. <laughs> they drink every time they see exo mist. Yikes. And in, in the same interview that I mentioned uh, where Ryan Douglas says that Sawyer is evil, he does mention that originally when he wrote the book, Jake was straight. And then even after he made Jake gay, Jake didn't have a love interest. Jake was meant what? to be single throughout the whole story. Then what so, other did you add that for? Yeah. <laughs> he said that, uh, I guess his decision, of course, was to make Jake gay. But the decision to add a love interest was from his publisher. That wasn't his idea. Um, so I think that explains why so much of Alistair just kind of feels shoehorned in, like it doesn't add to the plot at all. And I'm curious, like, do you think Jake being gay and then, of course, Jake having a love interest, does that hinder the story or benefit the story in your in your opinion? I don't I don't know that it for me. Added added a whole lot. I mean, I think it makes. It makes sense in like the aspect of like Jake already being like other or different from the people in his school. Yes. Like it enforces that otherness even like with his family, but he's already like a, a ghost whisperer. So mm -hmm. I don't like how how much other or different can you make him? Mm -hmm. um, and I think he mentions too that like even I I don't know that they give like a physical description of his mother, but they do mention that like he and Benji do not look alike at no. all. Mm -hmm. um, so there obviously is some like difference there. It makes me wonder like what what the mother, the other people in his family um, look like, and wonder if there's like some some like physical difference or like sense of otherness there too. Because I think it does mention that Jake Jake is like fairly fairly dark skinned, whereas Benji is like um, you know not not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but well, also looking uh, now that I looked up Ryan Douglas, he looks exactly like the boy on the cover. They, yeah. <laughs> they depicted this this character purely from his headshot. Look at his headshot. Oh yeah, he does look like Jake. Yikes. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I don't know. I think it, uh, weirdly enough, I think it did benefit the story because if he was straight, then why would I care, step one? And step two, like, I think the Sawyer thing would have been weirder. The fact that they're both gay gives them the, like, bond that makes that conversation more grounded, I think, in a way that's helpful. If he was straight being tormented by this gay white ghost, it would be even weirder that he would <laughs> up with anything that's going on. I feel like that, like the empathy there for like, oh yeah, I get what it's like to be gay and not understand. Also, that if he wasn't gay in the original and it's just like tormented for being black and Chad just hates him for being black and that's the whole point, he's black and nerdy and that's the whole crux of the book. Without him being gay, then that's even more like preposterous that it, he's gonna stab <laughs> the name of the pencil. <laughs> I don't know. I think he has to be gay for it to make any sort of sense. Mm. I do. I mean, I have I have several questions from what Robert just said for for you, Jonathan. But do you um, what? Why do you think Sawyer is gay in the book? Like, why why make queerness a part of Sawyer's character? 
I don't know. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess for me, it wasn't an issue that Sawyer was gay. I mean, I think the, I guess to answer my own question, I do think that the both characters being gay benefits the story. I think it, at least for me, gives me something to relate to. Uh, part of their feelings of being an outsider, being bullied, all that sort of stuff. But I will say that I don't think the the inclusion of a love interest for Jake make much sense. I would have preferred the story had Jake been single, and instead of Alistair's character, we would have had more time between Jake and Benji. Mm. I think I think the moments that we do get of them together are probably the strongest in the book, especially the moment at the end, and I'm not gonna go to the end right now, but the end uh, where Jake is in the hospital, that is probably one of the best, at least in terms of dialogue, moments in the book, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, but... I don't know. I don't know if I picked up on a reason as to why Sawyer is gay. I mean, I think now that I'm thinking about it, I think that that gives uh, Sawyer's uncle, Uncle Rod, a sort of connection to, to Sawyer because I think it's hinted at um, in the dialogue between Sawyer and his uncle that his uncle is actually gay too um, mm -hmm. and was kind of by his father, uh, I guess, toughened up, so to speak like no longer having female friends, no longer staying inside, have, being forced to play sports. Um, so I guess that helps establish that connection as well, which is probably why Sawyer's mother wanted them to spend so much time together, because she may have seen some of the same signs. Do you think there's a reason as to why Sawyer is gay? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I didn't really, really think about that. I kind of, I interpreted the mother like pushing Sawyer towards the uncle so much as just, as part of like the single mother stereotype, but um, I mean, I know I definitely like picked up on the part where even though the uncle never explicitly said that he's gay, where he's like, you know, all, all my friends were girls when I was in kindergarten or whatever. And I was like, well, but, like we, we understand what this means. Um, and I think there's a part too where like Sawyer, especially like in the audio book, um, Sawyer is like kind of making making fun of the uncle and he's like his whole personality is supposed to be guns because he didn't know how to shoot um and him just like 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 understanding that like a lot a lot of these things like may not be like his relationship with his uncle may not be what it's intended to be like on the surface or or what it may may appear and that maybe it's it's because of that sort of queerness that they both share but then i don't, I don't know i'm not sure <laughs> and you said you had some other questions what were your other questions i'm curious oh, i like went down you forgot down <laughs> no, I, um a little bit yes oh um you you mentioned about chad and i i thought it was interesting to like add this whole like uh, like cyberbullying revenge porn aspect into the mm -hmm. into the novel. I'm also a little a little bit curious of like what. So like we, I feel like we get some. I I don't want to say like stereotypes about Benji, but like, you know, it's it's nice to have a little bit of like a contrast. Of, like Jake as a character, but then for his brother to be like so different in so many ways and then of course he like you know he has to be like this like you know like black jock womanizer and a drug dealer for no and, reason and, and, and a drug dealer <laughs> for, no, for no reason again like their, their mother is a pilot who's supposed to be in the suburbs um mm -hmm. <laughs> like of course of, of course benji has to be like you know like again like robert said like the the black drug dealer jock womanizer mm -hmm. and then and then like the revenge porn on top of it and then cheating with chad's girlfriend um did you i'm curious if you thought that like this whole like ghost doing revenge porn cyber bullying aspect was necessary in this story or like how how did you and then of course like benji taking that out on on jake and destroying like all of jake's like treasured treasured little trinkets which is another thing that i have a question about um so like not to compound seven seven questions in one but um one one how do you feel about benji and a lot of the stereotypes that are thrown on him two do you think that the like cyberbullying revenge porn was necessary in the story and in three like all of these like trinkets that jake has and treasures and then benji destroying them in response 
Um, do you feel that that is like in any way like Benji rejecting Jake's queerness or like like having and loving these like you know like a glass what like a glass elephant and like an incense jar and all these things like sort of in, inherently gay things and that by him destroying them he's like rejecting Jake's queerness in any way. Hmm. <laughs> um, Sorry, I, I I know that's again mul multiple questions in one, but all 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 related to the same incident. So I hope it makes sense to group them. But I mean, I guess I wasn't considering the how heavily Benji is stereotyped as a character, but I do think that it. I guess it makes sense why there's such a divide between Benji and Jake. I mean, they're both total opposites. Um, and in terms of stereotypes, it almost kind of, now that I'm thinking about it, it almost seems like Benji is not, Benji's only doing what Benji is doing to become popular. I think he's playing into a lot of the white classmates and even white teachers' opinions of him, like their preconceived notions of him. And I guess that's like helping him stay popular by like selling drugs to these white kids. They ha he has a reason to kind of like be social with them. Um, the revenge porn aspect, that didn't really make sense to me in the grand scheme mm -hmm. of the story. And that's another reason why I thought it would have made more sense instead of Alistair kind of like tagging along uh, with Jake on all these like uh, Sawyer discovering adventures. It would have been Benji because I think if I was Benji and my brother who sees ghosts told me I didn't do what a ghost did, I would have said, okay, prove it. And then that would have naturally yeah. kind of led me along, you know, on the, down the rabbit hole of finding out who Sawyer is and, you know, all of that. Um, and your third question was the destroying of stuff. I mean, I don't know if I would say the things he destroyed are traditionally queer like items like elephants and incense. I mean, I guess I do love incense, so maybe it is, but uh, I, I look at those things as, <laughs> you do too. I look at those things as being more of like a, a connection to like people who are mediums or who are more like spiritual. Um, I know incense are used in a lot of like, um, I don't want to say witchcraft, but a lot of that sort of, uh, I don't know, that sort of belief incense are used a lot in those settings um elephants i'm not sure but but yeah i mean did you did you read that as benji rejecting jake's queerness um i i don't know that i explicitly read it that way but i definitely read it as like these are things that are very precious and, and sacred to jake and that i sort of like lumped his queerness into that category of something being like I, I don't want to say like precious and sacred, but maybe more like like personal and closely held. Um, even though there is a point later where Benji's like, like we we know you're gay, Jake, and like it's not a secret. Um, mm -hmm. But that 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 to me, it it felt like it it was part of it at some level. Um, but again, that may be just like me trying to try trying to relate everything in the story to like you know Jake Jake being queer. And I guess now that we're talking about uh, the like the revenge porn aspect, that then leads to uh, to the trio of Fiona, Alistair, and Jake going to to <laughs> Sawyer's house. I'm curious, <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of that moment? I mean, honestly, that part to me felt so like Nancy Drew, and I really hated it. <laughs> I, read it. I love Nancy Drew, and that part made no sense to me. I hated it. So I will say what's really funny is that I was describing what I was reading to uh, someone else and that like when she was from the club, they were like, oh, so it's like like a black gay Nancy Drew. And I was like, no, but <laughs> except for this one scene. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it, it did feel a little, a little, I, I won't say out of place, but it, like, like you're saying, it definitely felt very like, uh, like Nancy Drew, and then the whole part of like talking, talking to the mother, and like who lets this random child in to talk about again. And they live in the middle of the woods. Like, how how did they even find the house? Yeah. <laughs> yes, but it did that. There, there were a couple parts in the book that were like a little bit too, uh, like fantastical for belief, and that 
that to me was one of them. Um, and I don't, I don't know that it added too much to the story that we couldn't have gotten from other, other devices or like from other, other situations. Like why not, like, why can't they just like hack into Sawyer social media and like find essentially all the same things? Why do they have to like go to the house and interview the mother and like break in and steal the journal? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm guessing, do you, do you have some like Nancy Drew related, related thoughts on that whole scenario? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'll say I was not a Nancy Drew fan. So I guess that, that part kind of annoyed me, but I will say that it didn't make sense to only have them be a trio in that one moment. I think the rest of the story, they could have been a lot more helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean, why only have them assist him once and then everything else he does by himself? And then he says it's because because he's too afraid of like getting them hurt, but they already are involved in it. So it's like, you should have thought of that before getting them involved. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Not and then I guess even to go back a little bit uh, before that part, when he tells Alistair that he can see ghosts, Alistair just kind of believes it. He's like, yep, which is just so cool. Just so <laughs> yeah. <and> cool. <laughs> and I mean, I understand why Fiona believed it because she says that her grandmother used to be able to see ghosts, but mm -hmm. for Alistair to just believe it makes zero sense to me at all with like no proof, no sort of backstory, just I can see ghosts. Okay. Like, do, as, do you uh, think... <laughs> I, I I was also annoyed by that, but like for me, part of like the I will say world world building and some very like uh, loose quotes and just how liberal you know Ryan Douglas is with like Jake being in this like ectoplasm. I see ghosts. There's like death loops. Blah blah blah. It made it feel to me like, especially at the beginning of the book, and especially in my first read, that this was like a normal a normal thing. Everyone gets it. Do you think maybe part of that is like we're supposed to understand that like oh like a lot of people know that like there's like mediums and people that just like walk around seeing people like jump out of windows and kill themselves every day <laughs> um, and, they, okay. and, they, and they just deal with it and like don't live with like too much trauma and it's just normal mm -hmm. and we're surrounded by ectoplasm and, and ghost <laughs> ectomist sorry uh and, you know whatever like these these ghostly things that are everywhere and some of us just don't see it and some of us do and that's perfectly fine do you do you think that that may be like like part of that or did you have any any interpretation or did you get any sense of like we're supposed to believe this is like a really a really normal thing that everyone like understands and gets or or do you think that like is specific to like this this collection this like trio of characters I didn't necessarily get that but I mean I will say my first time reading and this time as well I felt the world building was lacking like totally. Um, I was so confused. We don't get any sort of reasoning as to why Jake has the powers and like no one in his family believes him. It's like it would have made more sense had they said, OK, Jake's grandmother or his grandfather or whatever. And then we have some sort of context and like as to why Jake has the powers, but he just kind of has them for no reason, which makes sense. He does nothing with them, which makes sense, which makes no sense. Um, and yeah, I, I mean. I'll say just the world building was totally lacking. But in the same interview, again, to reference that interview, uh, Ryan oh, Douglas does I, say the book was originally meant to be uh, 200,000 words longer. No. And that, and, and that was all of Jake's backstory. Uh, no, so all of Jake's what? backstory was cut out. And that was a decision by the publishers. Um, Good. And he couldn't fight it. <laughs> what do you mean backstory? What, what, what other backstory yeah. for the ghosts? Oh, my God. And I, I mean, that just kind of, uh, that was upsetting. I mean, I think that we definitely, I mean, in my opinion, we needed that, you know, to kind of understand Jake more. Um, but without it, it feels like Sawyer is our main character because we learned so much about him and so little about Jake, which mm -hmm. obviously is not the intention of the book. And oh. it unfortunately made me like Sawyer more, or not necessarily mm -hmm. like him, but think he's a stronger character. And that's totally. upsetting because that is our white character, not our co character of color. And I shouldn't mm -hmm. be walking away from a book centering blackness, liking the white character more. Yeah. <laughs> so Duh. That, ugh, I hated that. But I guess to defend Ryan Douglas, that was not his decision. <laughs> as to why the world building is the way it is. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. 
I, I would have kept the world, well, hmm, I think it definitely didn't need to be 200,000 words longer or however many words he cut, but he definitely could have given us more of a rationale in, mm-hmm. like, if there's no reason to go to Josette without some sort of, like, grounding. And as you said, I think it would have been helpful if he had been based in helping people the entire mm-hmm. novel, and that was his thing, rather than just kind of just watching things happen his entire life. But I guess that's also the point, and at least what Ryan thought the point was, like, oh, I'm just letting life happen to me for 500 million pages, and then finally the last two pages, I'm going to kiss Alistair, and I'm going to take him by the chest and taste his menthol <laughs> mouth and kiss him on a brick wall in an alley. And if someone sees me and kills me, then I'll die in a loop on a wall against this brick wall, and I won't care. The end. Like, uh, I, yeah, I guess. But I don't know if that's the message I want to send to teen queers, but that's mm-hmm. the message that Ryan Douglas thought was okay. <laughs> And I, I guess it's it's also shocking to me, knowing how long Jake has known about his powers, how little he understands, because it's revealed yes. that he knew his powers as early as five, and he's, <laughs> I believe, 16 or 17 when we meet him, yes. so it's like, out of those 12, 11 years, you know nothing. No, he's watching. <laughs> do you, do you yeah. feel that Jake is, in general, just kind of, like, lazy about his potential and his abilities? Not, mm. not even specifically here, but there is, I mean, both... And again, like, to, again, to add to the Benji stereotype, like, you know, Mahila is like, um, also like, why does her name have to be Mahila? Like, Mahalia, oh my gosh, yeah. the girl right <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, but like the part where she's like, <laughs> it, oh, again, of course, like adding his stereotype, like Benji's high all the time and he's like not applying to college. Um, mm-hmm. But then like for Jake, it's like kind of the same thing where Jake is like, oh, like, I don't... I don't think I have to go to college. I don't think I have to like really apply to schools. Like Jake doesn't seem dumb. And I think it mentions at one point, like, um, you know, he's not, he's not like an A student, but he's still like, he's, he's still passing obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but just in general, I think we get the sense a couple of times that Jake is just kind of like, I don't, I don't want to say lazy, but like not, fully invested in digging into things that could really like help him reach his full potential. And this is like one of, one of those examples, like he could be, you know, I don't, I don't know. He could be like a celebrity medium. He Mm. could, Jake could really essentially do whatever he wants with these like magical powers that apparently no one else has. um, But it's just like not, not really embracing them. And like, I feel like the same thing about school. Like if Jake tried just like, 5% 5% harder um, or like put forth like any, any bit of effort or tried to connect. Even like, again, I know, you know, he's, he's black, he's gay, he's a ghost whisperer. Um, he doesn't fit in at school, but like, if he like tried to like connect a little bit more and like dig in there, that like there is a lot of potential for him to be super, super successful. And we just see so many times of him just like not, not doing that. And even like the thing with Alistair, I think that there is like a part of Jake's queerness where he's like, Oh, there's no gay people in my school. Jake lives in a very big city with a, a whole whole lot of Atlanta. A whole whole lot of gay people. Um, <laughs> one of the black gay people. Yes. Like, oh, um, the only one known ever has been gay and black before. Just me. Sure, damn. <laughs> like, like really, all, all he has to do is like go outside. Go, yes, go 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 outside. Um, <laughs> and he will he will find plenty of people like him very very close to where he is people that would like mentor him and help him be successful and be the best version of what he wants to be like just if if i'm reading a story about a black gay man in atlanta like i know all you have to do is like there's there is some mentor out there that wants you to succeed in every way possible and be the best version of yourself in a city like that uh and i just again like i don't i i don't want to call jake lazy but there are a lot of places where it's like he just had a tiny bit more no, it's a semi-autobiography. Right. It's Ryan's autobiography because he also was lazy. <laughs> but I, I guess my question is like, do you do you perceive Jake at all as being like lazy or not fully utilizing his potential, or do you think do you think that's intentional? Like, why why like put so many of these things into into Jake's character that I don't think 
are necessary and don't and don't contribute to a fully believable character in my mm-hmm. opinion especially like it's it's set essentially now um i mean i know it doesn't mention like covid or anything like that but i'm assuming it's set like within the last 10 years um and some of these things just like don't don't make a lot of sense to me so i'm curious to hear hear what you think about like jake's jake's drive and willingness to like make connections and utilize his skill sets and develop them to the best of his ability I, I totally agree with you. I mean, I think Jake for me is just the embodiment of like untapped potential. It seems mm-hmm. as if throughout the story, we learn just how strong his powers are and how much he can do with them. And it's a shame that we only get that at the very tail end. Um, and I mean, I guess it's also confusing to me. Jake continually harps on like wanting to escape his environment. And I think for most people like queer or not, um, you kind of set the groundwork for that pretty early in your life. And it's like Jake is kind of just going through every day, going through the motions. Like, how do you expect to escape the reality you live in, but you're doing nothing to escape it? Um, Mm -hmm. So, I mean, unfortunately, I don't have a direct, I guess, answer to that question. I mean, I don't know if I would say he's lazy, but I do think there's a lot of uh, untapped potential there. I do agree with that. And I know we earlier we talked about um, not really understanding, like, why couldn't the trio, Fiona, Alistair, and Jake, just break into, like, Sawyer's social media? And I, I agree. I mean, I do think that breaking into his house was very extreme and kind of unnecessary. <laughs> um, and that made me think that, would, that part of the story would have made more sense had Sawyer been a part of a different decade, which I think would have also made the story work more for me. Um, Do you think that would have helped the story? Like, I think, for example, Sawyer would have made more sense in, like, the 70s or the 80s as opposed to being in the same time period as Jake. Yeah. I I agree. I also think Sawyer would have been Mm accurate. No, that's it. Oh, yeah. I I kind of think so. Or it it would have made more sense to me, that scene, if they had gone to the same school. The Mm -hmm. fact that Sawyer went to some other Other school. Some other school. And some, like, I I don't necessarily know there's a different district, but, like... It was it was not where they went to school. They weren't like in the same peer groups necessarily. Like that whole part makes it seem a little a little strange to me. Um, Agreed. But yeah, I definitely and even like reading it and I don't know. Um, did you did you listen to the audiobook at all, Jonathan? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. So in in my audiobook, um, it is two only two different narrators. One. One for Jake and then one one for Sawyer, but even the one that I got for Sawyer, like just sounds like he is not from the same time period as Jake at all. Um, just <laughs> and I don't I don't know if that's like intentional because I know like you know Jake is living this like suburban like big city adjacent life, and while Sawyer is probably only fifteen minutes down the road, uh, living <laughs> living this like you know like backwoods country life. I don't know if that was like part of it or like part of the intention, but. Even just like the way the way Sawyer was read in my audiobook just made him sound so um so so distant in time or distant in experience compared to like what uh what Jake was. So I could definitely see the uh him like making more sense in a different decade as part of part of the story. I don't know if I would throw it as far back as what did you say, seventies? Actually eighties. Oh, eighties. Mm-hmm. I think like eighties, eighties, nineties would make a little bit more sense. Um and I really I don't think we got any Sort of like social media, internet, persona, context from Sawyer at all. Yeah, he was on Sawyer. Incel. He's not like in well, I think '90s or '80s would have worked well for. Him. Yeah, but he got also like as someone who has no social media. Um, I, I I mean maybe maybe I can kind of like empathize with that a little bit more, but um, it it did it did feel a little bit strange some of the some of the things not being so like. Up, up with the times are relevant uh, to what we what we would expect compared to some of what else is going on in the story. Mm-hmm. And that's a really good point because both Sawyer and Jake kind of harp on the idea of hating social media. And I think that at least for a lot of queer, lonely kids in this generation, social media is like their best friend. So it's kind mm-hmm. of odd that you have people who don't have real life friends, but also don't want online friends. Um, but then also complain about feeling lonely. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> and then I guess to kind of circle back to, uh, we talked about Chad earlier. Did anyone get the sense that like Chad was meant to play a much bigger part in Jake's story? I was like, okay. It's I thought they were going to fall in love. Yeah, I was like, okay. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a false lead. Like, oh, he's always looking at you. Like, okay. Oh, okay. That's where it's going. So like, I'll give him that. Like, he gave us a switch out there. And all of a sudden, oh, here comes the Disney you know, friends. Oh, you're in the bathroom. Let's let's exchange some paper towels. And like, ooh, the, the auras and the, the crown of glory. Like, oh, he must be a king. I was just like, oh so much mm -hmm. um but yeah I, th I thought chad was doing something interesting but he was just <laughs> there to fight benji and fight <laughs> jake <laughs> boring yeah I, I i agree i mean i think i i thought reading both times that they were gonna fall in love at some point or at least i i, I did not want jake to love chad but at least have no. chad have feelings for jake because i think a lot of the bullying it crossed over from just being racist to being obsessive. Yes. Um, like he was consistently trying to find ways to interact with Jake as mm -hmm. opposed to like being forced to have to interact with him. Even going to his house and like, that, that was just so strange. <laughs> and then to of course not have him play a larger part in the story. And it's also odd after Chad is stabbed, that's all we hear about Chad. But Chad is Jake's primary bully. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's um, yeah. And I guess I'll ask, what did you guys think of Jake stabbing Chad? Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like I didn't see I didn't see Jake's character doing that except one. Like mm -hmm. he barely like, oh, I can't handle my my astral powers and my swords and the whips and chains, yada yada yada. <laughs> like now he would grab a pencil and stab him through the hand, which is like like him push like him getting up and pushing Jake at the chat of the chair, that would have been reasonable. Or like slapping him or like kicking him or something like very reasonable stabbing someone through the hand with a pencil is just like also like i didn't understand at the very beginning of the book we're like oh benji and jake let's investigate the house let's grab this knife and oh it's better to stab upwards than downwards how does he know that is that something that happened in the book <laughs> i just missed because jake's like oh yeah this is a good knife for stabbing upwards rather than downwards Maybe he's just got a, got a thing for stabbing that I missed out for. So, like, maybe the pencil makes more sense. That's in the 200,000 words that we missed out Oh, on. there it is. Because <laughs> he really was like, oh, yeah, this is a good knife for going up. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to know how he knows that. Because I don't, I can't grab, ooh, this is an upward knife. This is a downward knife. I have no directionality on my knife stabbing activities. But he seemed to have lots of knowledge. I kind of. To, to go back to that specific scene, um, I, I did really like seeing Jake and Benji like bonding in that moment and seeing um, like Jake have this sort of like, you know, whatever, like medium ghostly astral experience and like having being like, oh, like sometimes other people can experience this through like understand what I'm seeing uh, was, ki was kind of a nice like, like break in some of the stuff that had been going on. But again, I thought that that again was to like make Benji seem kind of like the dumb, dumb jock mm -hmm. older brother. Like, oh, he doesn't even know how to stab, but here I know I know how to stab somebody. Mm -hmm. this, this, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't know. Do you do you remember many specifics from that scene, Jonathan, or did you did you pick up on on that, especially like in in linking back to uh, Jake, of course, again stabbing someone later in the book <laughs> that he had like in the beginning of the book uh, had had expertise on how to stab somebody. I actually didn't pick up on that when I read that scene, but I mean, if that's in there, then yeah, that is an inconsistency. I mean, I, I guess I'll say that with the Jake stabbing Chad, that scene would have only made sense to me had Sawyer been possessing Jake's body then, that yeah. that violence would have made a lot more sense because from what we know about Jake, he's not a violent character. He's actually, no. he goes out of his way to even avoid talking to people. So he definitely wouldn't attack someone. And then I, what annoys me about that scene is then Jake is upset when he's suspended from school, but it's like, of course he would be, you stab someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
so ridiculous. Yeah. And I guess to point out another inconsistency for me, uh, someone in a review pointed out, it's kind of shady, but they pointed out that in the very first um, page of the book, when we hear about Jake seeing the the jock that was impaled by the javelin on the uh, mm. on the field, Ryan Douglas says the ghost died in the 80s, but he was holding a portable Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think yeah. I picked up on he was on did I. Bluetooth did specifically, I. but I did I did pick up on like the outfit and him being like, oh, he's in a crop top and like shorty shorts. Yeah. If he was if he was around these days, he'd be he's made fun of because yeah. he's a little gay boy. Wait, what about the Bluetooth speaker? Wait, what? Uh, oh wait, first, no, I because think. he specifically says yeah. I, no, I remember he says like, oh, he's doing body rolls to trap songs. That is yeah, definitely yeah. not eighties. That is yeah, twenty tens. Oh. <laughs> um, so some inconsistency. What's the, what's yeah, that? that's that's strange. Weird. I don't I don't think I caught on that, but no, I do yeah. I do specifically remember the line about body rolls or trap songs because I was thinking, oh, this is again before I caught on to the the world building aspect that was missing. Mm. I thought this was real life and somebody in Jake's class just like mm. not not paying attention, living in my own world. Yeah. Speaking of speakers, can we talk about the janitor going around and putting speakers around the school to simulate the school shooting and having the children <laughs> run from the halls? <laughs> Not through a planned drill, just a, hey, here's, let's just simulate one, see what happens. Oh my God, I couldn't, I can't even, just like, anger is not even the word I felt. I was just so done <laughs> the book at that point. Like, hmm, let's talk about what happened. Let's have an assembly. Ridiculous! Oh, <laughs> stupid. But I, I don't actually work in a school, but I did. I did think some of the things were like not, not realistic. Not realistic at being, all. And I just, I know. Did you have some comments? No, no, keep going. Keep going. No, no I'm just saying. Like, I, I, you've I'm, been to a school. You've been yes, inside oh, a school. I've been, I've been to hundreds of schools. <laughs> no, but it's like you, you've gone through school. You were in a public school. That's like that's just ridiculous. Like I. I it, I find it hard to believe Ryan Douglas also has not been to <laughs> school <laughs> to recognize how that just makes no sense. Yeah. I, I mean, did you did you find any of the of the school school life or things like like a janitor hiding speakers <laughs> to simulate a school shooting like really really unbelievable or again maybe like as part of this and this one also ties back to the school shooting thing which I don't know if it's like meant to really really appeal to a specific young adult audience mm. or um like have some sort of like maybe like trauma bonding <laughs> narrative um but did you i mean i'm i'm assuming were you i'm assuming you were not homeschooled that's probably a bad assumption to make but if, <laughs> if you weren't homeschooled and had been been to public school at all did you think that like any of these things were like a little fantastical or like not not related to most people's school experience? Um, well, I, I wasn't homeschooled. I was in public school. I guess I'll say that. But when I was in school, we did do safety trainings, but it was always announced prior, this is a safety training. Exactly. Like they never just kind of sprung it on us <laughs> to see our reactions. Um, I think that would cause a lot of panic, which is exactly what I, happened in the story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In my district, we would be sued for that. Oh, you would absolutely yeah. be sued. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> In what world? The, the, the mother parents that would immediately, immediately show up yeah. on the doorstep. How dare you? Yeah. Oh, especially in a private school that's a private all school? white students? No way. Oh, yeah. No way. <laughs> well, sorry, not yeah. students. All but, but all white, yeah. Four, sorry. The hell yeah? Oh yeah, Mahalia. Mahalia, Benji, Jake, and, and Fiona. Oh yeah. Yeah, five out of the whole story. What, what did you guys like, think of, of like Alistair essentially coming out of nowhere in like the middle of the school year? Yeah, he just like poofed in, like, hey, here I am. Yeah. Oh, I hacked I hacked the mainframe and my dad was like, hey, <laughs> you no. to go in here. <laughs> I forgot about that because <laughs> He was like my dad's a cybersecurity professional, and we broke, broke into the school's <laughs> database and so that I didn't get my acceptance letter, even though I, I really been accepted. Ridiculous. So, yes, two 
too many like strange coincidences. Um, I do. Um, I don't. I know we're running like kind of close to time. I think, but I I did have uh, a couple a couple bigger bigger questions about like stuff towards the end that may may lead to a lot more conversation. I mean, I'm I'm fine to mm -hmm. stay on. Um, I'm fine to monopolize Robert's time because. <laughs> I'm sitting here, but I don't. I don't know if you have time to like dig into all these things, Jonathan. But yeah, sure. Um, there, like, I don't. The title of the book and like the way Jake sort of like succumbs to like letting Sawyer take over, um, to me, like, felt a little bit like like an allusion to almost to to like bottoming or like being. <laughs> No, I mean I don't I don't no, necessarily. No, 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 no. The, the name of the book is literally the taking of Jake Living. Yes. But just I it felt a little bit kind of like that, like oh, I'm like like giving up, giving up my body or like my my innocence in this way, um, that, like is really really yeah. specific to being, uh, you know, some, you know, some some parts of like the the gay male experience. But, no, absolutely, because I was like taking on Jake the entire time, and I was like, oh. I won't change. And then to like, it's like, oh, I'll let you have me. Like, okay, if you don't hurt Alistair, sure, I'll, I'll let you take my body. Like, I can totally see that. Which, which I know is taking it to like maybe a whole, a whole other place. It's not intended, intended for it to be, but to be like a, you know, like a, a queer black male experience that did, that felt like there was some like remnants of that there. I don't know, maybe. We have Sawyer who never got to like experience like intimacy in a, uh, non uh from that non problematic way like have like agency over like hey i want to connect to another body it's like even though he was evil of course as <laughs> ryan decided is interesting and kind of juicy even though it's like problematic because he like possessed <laughs> him like there is something still there i think yeah and we, two point. and we do get some like explicit parts later in the book where like jake and alistair like Oh, like let's let's talk about dicks. Yeah, I'm like a big dicks. Oh, dick, 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 dick. Also, dick, dick. like, what a strange thing to throw in at the end because there's been, in in my reading of the book, no. Essentially, I, I don't want to say sexuality, but nothing is like so, so explicit or no, physical. No, no, yeah. And then like it felt like a lot of things at the end that to me were like. To maybe like Jay coming into his like physical sexuality, sexual being, yeah. um. But I'm I'm really curious, Jonathan, to know if you like felt any of those similar things or like picked up on anything like that or did, did you have similar thoughts or you're like, oh Michael, you're like putting way <laughs> way way too much like physical sexual nonsense into the book that wasn't there. <laughs> I mean, I did not pick up on the aspect of the possession being about bottoming. I mean it could be, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I <laughs> I will say the end uh, where they are talking about dicks that felt very strange. Because you're yeah, right, yeah. there are no other mentions of like any sort of like sex or any of that. I mean, of course, they're like 16, 17, yeah. but still, you know. Oh, that's true. Yeah, there is the scene with Benji and uh, Laura. I think her name is Laura. Yeah, even Jake's um, like, oh, wow. Like, I would never do yeah. that. Like, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, dicks, dicks, dicks. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <It's> too much. <laughs> and then to have that conversation and then go go right into Jake saying he's never been kissed before is kind of odd. Um, yes. Yeah. Kissing in an alley. <laughs> it's like, it was so novel, like, for a romantic, or what was supposed to be a romantic tale of these two, like, coming to their Black queerness. It's like, oh, we pull you to the alley and kiss against the wall. It was just like, it was so lackluster for especially for a teen novel where it can be anything and like it's supposed to be like fireworks and like foot pops and like those sorts of things it felt very seedy and kind of so like he was controlled by shame which is kind of sad <laughs> i guess before we discuss the end of the book i'll just ask what did you guys think of uh of jake letting sawyer kill uncle rod even though jake says he could have stopped it Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, even like, oh no, I gotta let him put this on body. Like, you're gonna let your body stab someone? Even if you're like, oh, I feel bad for this man. You, your human body is going to human jail. In what world does it make sense you're gonna let him stab this man multiple times and set his house on fire? It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I also thought it was ridiculous, but again, like some of these things are like made me think of this like allusion to, or like maybe maybe Ryan Douglas alluding to like, oh, Jake's like letting, you know, just like, you know, opening up and letting his body be controlled by someone else and like just being a, for better or worse quote, like being lazy and laying there and like oh, no. le- letting whatever happened to him. And just yeah. that's, that, that's kind of why, why I made that comment. It wasn't to be like, <laughs> I didn't start explicit or anything, but just, it felt like Jake is just like, Oh, like this, this is what's happening to me. And like, it's, it's an experience. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to like go, go through it and then take, take whatever I, I want or need from what happens, even though I could stop it at any moment if I really needed to, but I'm just not, not going to, because there could be like some, some like bigger, bigger revelation or, or feeling or, um, you know, like you, euphoria at the end of it. And yeah, no, I just, it, I get, I, I don't know, maybe Jake is being lazy again. I don't, I don't want to call him lazy, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I, I didn't kind of like get that, and ma- and maybe that's why I'm like throwing in my uh, my my little comment there, not not making any like comments about like any you know, whatever. But uh, I don't know. And what what are what are your thoughts on all that, Jonathan? I mean, that scene for me definitely was strange. Just Jake kind of letting it happen, but I think it's kind of revealed early on that Jake has at least some people in his life that he wouldn't be sad if they died. Like he does say about Chad that like, if something happened to him, I wouldn't miss him. So I think maybe in Jake's mind, uncle Rot deserved it, which I'm not, I'm not going to argue against that, but it's just kind of odd. He would do nothing. And then I guess the strangest part is at the very end, as we're tying things up, we never get a mention as to like where that goes. Because obviously, eventually, someone would call the police and an investigation would happen and be on the news. But we don't hear what happens with that. It's just like he does it and he gets away with it and that's it, which doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I, I I, don't want to say I was expecting it, but I definitely was a little bit like, oh, a black kid murdered a very racist yeah. white man. Yes. And yeah. then got, got away with it. Like, I, just, I, I did not want Jake to go to jail, but like no. I... Mm-hmm. was fully expecting like very very quick and swift retribution um, again like assuming they're like minutes outside of a major city like mm-hmm. a, really a, a single house burning down in the woods 15 miles outside of atlanta would be very easily caught by like regular <laughs> regular mm-hmm. surveillance and then to like see someone speeding away covered in blood mm-hmm. <laughs> in a stolen vehicle mm-hmm. um i don't just I, that part didn't make sense to me again like i don't I don't want Jake to go to jail. Um, but yes, I, I agree with you. Like it felt it felt very, very weird for him to just be like going on with normal life as we know it at the end of the mm-hmm. book. I I don't want retribution, but I expected some like some resolution to this you know, extreme violence, even though again it wasn't like at, at Jake's hand, it really was like at Sawyer's hand. Um yeah, no, no, that that was weird. I also did not expect Jake to be murdering anyone. <laughs> it was not ridiculous. It was not the the killing by Jake Livingston. It was the taking of Jake Livingston. But. <laughs> I think you actually make a really good point because the car accident doesn't happen too far from Uncle Rod's house, and we know that the police and the ambulance go to the scene of the car accident. So there would have, of course, been some immediate connection, a burning house, kid covered yes. in blood, you know. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Like, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but I know that Ryan, um, that Ryan Douglas says that um, he refused to have Jake die or be killed by police or go to jail in his story, which is fine. But I mean, I, I, I don't want that either. But at the <laughs> same time, I think... <laughs> <laughs> if it part of his book, I really would not have been able to. <laughs> and I guess I'll ask, what did you guys think of the decision, Jake's decision to leave the school at the end? That doesn't <laughs> matter to me. I was like, I don't care what school you go to. I don't care. Like, you uh, and Alistair well, are going to date for like five seconds and he's going to leave someone else or you're going to leave someone else. Like, I don't see much 
depth in any of these characters or situations at large? I, I, I kind of agree. I don't think that school was important Mm-mm. to me, at least, except for like being a backdrop for some of the things that happened to me. Oh, he's a nerd who's not good at school at all. Yeah. Like, it's just like I mean, that, that's part of it. Like, also, he doesn't like he like is participating in school, but is not caring about mm-hmm. it. So, and he said it very clearly. He like, doesn't care if he goes to college or not. <laughs> no, um, he has no friends except for his brother, who's not really his friend. Kind of likes to draw. Has no real ambition outside of it. No clubs. No sort of anything. And his like not boyfriend, boyfriend, and his brother is not girlfriend, girlfriend. Um, and not Fiona. And Fiona, yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't it like it didn't it didn't bother me that much. Like do a do I want to see like a, a black boy probably three credits away from graduating from <laughs> dropping out of school? No, no, but it it didn't it didn't surprise me, unfortunately. Um mm. I, I didn't have any strong feelings. I wanted to have strong feelings about it, Mm-mm. um, but I, I did not, um, which is kind of sad because and then like like put it putting it in like personal a personal moment like I part, a big part of my like personal life my job is making sure that we graduate as many students as possible mm-hmm. um and like just seeing seeing someone not not do that is not not fun but I don't know what 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 are what are your thoughts on on Jake and his education journey at the end again you were uh you know, with two two education professionals, so we may have a little bit of a different <laughs> mm-hmm. or 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 stronger point of view um, on on that particular moment than than the average person. But I'm I'm curious on on your thoughts, Jonathan. Yeah, I, I think the decision doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, I guess I'm taking the entire story as like maybe a piece of advice for like struggling queer kids in Jake's situation, like in this modern day. Um, And I don't think the best message for them is to just leave. I think Mm -hmm. there should have been some better solution. I mean, but I guess to be fair, I also don't think that anyone should have to endure an environment they're unhappy in. So I guess that's okay. But Again, with Alistair, it doesn't make sense to bring in this boyfriend, so to speak, that he's known for, I'm assuming, two or three weeks, maybe even shorter than that, (laughs) who he then leaves. And they're supposed to still have a romance, but they're not really together. So how are they going to make that work long distance? And then what happens with his brother? That's never explained. Like, does he also leave? Does he stay? And then... It doesn't make sense for Jake's character being as shy as he is, as much of a loner as he is, to want to go to a large public school. I think homeschooling would have been a much better environment for him. I I guess there there, there should have been some other solution besides just transferring schools. That, to me, kind of seemed a bit defeatist um, in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And then I guess I'll also ask... How did you guys feel about Jake's supposed growth throughout the whole story? Did you think he grew at all? <laughs> um, um, I mean, at the end, he decided to make a choice. Like, he stopped being indecisive, I guess, sort of, kind of. Was like, oh, I want to kiss that man on the mouth. Also, wh- why did he taste like menthol? Was he smoking cigarettes some other time we didn't notice? I, I really want to understand why the kiss tastes like menthol. <laughs> Like, really I, I want to know what like, it may just, it just <laughs> but uh, he grew in that he made decisions. So I guess <laughs> technically yes, <laughs> but he still has no he still has no control over powers, which Ryan's like explicitly said like I still don't know how to control my powers. I'm like yeah, which doesn't make any sense. I'm glad you have acknowledged that for us because we also don't understand. Um, so I don't really think he grew at all, but then he didn't die, I guess. So that's something. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? I agree. I mean, I didn't notice any large signs of growth that I would have wanted. Also, I think we're supposed to believe that Jake learns to stick up for himself after fighting Sawyer and knows and learns how to go after what he wants. But if that's the case, he wouldn't leave school. He would stay mm-hmm. and kind of like stick it out. Duh. Um yeah. Especially because he now has a support system. He has Alistair and Fiona, so there's really no reason to leave. You want to leave your only friends? I, I don't know. But, yeah, I agree. There's really not much growth. Outside of the kissing, I mean, I guess he showed initiative there, but 
outside of that, he's the same person he was in the beginning of the book. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that just leaves him as such a flat character. And I mean, there are some rumors I've read about this becoming a uh, a series, like Ryan Douglas is writing a sequel. And if that's of the case, I guess, I guess this book lays some decent groundwork, but if it's a standalone novel, it's very, to me, unsatisfactory. Um, yeah. What do Agreed. you think, Michael? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, especially hearing your comments that this is supposed to be part of a series. I'm I'm not sure what's next. Mm-hmm. Unless it's more of like Jake exploring some of these things that we, um, I, I don't want to say have complained about, but have have questioned as to like why why they're part of the story. But <laughs> hmm. sorry, you like like I don't, I don't want to say stump me a little bit. I'm just like what 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 could be next at this point? Like Jake is not mm-hmm. he's not in school. No, nope. I mean I'm assuming like maybe his support system will still be in his life. I again like not to echo Robert's comment or make assumptions, but like his relationship with Alistair feels incredibly superficial and very oh, like yes. like first love and just kind of like oh my god somebody showed interest in me like. It's it it doesn't seem like something. Also, the audacity when he said, "Oh, uh, we finally finally answers like, oh, I have feeling, or I like you too." And uh, Austin has the audacity to say, "Of course you do." I would have walked right out of that diner immediately when, when you were sixteen. Would you have walked out? But you know, of course I, you, I, I don't. I don't think I would have either. Oh, of course, you, I would have been very humiliated. I would have. I would not. It wouldn't have been a cute moment. I would have been like, "Oh, ew, gross." Yuck! It would not have been a mm, moment. Of course you do. That's like that's like something the, the villain says. That's not a that's not a dreamy response. Like of course, of course you do. So you're just I'm just the next conquest on your list of of hoes you captured along the way. I, I, no, sixteen year old me would have still still been wary of that foolishness. Because that's that's like Disney. That's Disney villain. I don't I don't know that. Sorry, Jake is basic Am- so. ambulance. Jake, it makes sense for Jake not to be uh, wary of that because Jake has no sense. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, it's yeah, when, I, when I do book club at home, I'm in my office on a secluded street next to a park. But well, I'm on a major thoroughfare, so next sorry. to next to the office. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, I don't. I, I don't know that I like can see can see what's next for Jake with some of these things, but uh also don't necessarily know that I agree with some of uh Robert's comments, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do I don't I don't know, like if I like try trying to put myself in this world that Jake is in, if I am the only person of color and the only gay person, the only person of color yeah, except for my brother. Um, yes, yes, in the summer of, of, of Atlanta, the, um, and, and the only gay person again like, in the suburb of the major city. Um, I, I don't know that I would like have some of those same, same doubts, and I think that I would be more, more inclined, especially thinking to my own experience of like, you know, being, being in, being in small town, being one of like the only quote unquote other, um, in, in multiple ways, and like it. You may even want to give into that, but like in the next book, I just, I would, I would think that like, in the nicest way possible, like Jake and Alistair break up, and Alistair turns out to be like a, a Pegasus or something. Or... Oh, <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Again, just you know, me purely, purely speculating. Um, again, or I don't know, maybe Alistair is literally a pixie. Um, mm. you know, he, would, he would fit in with the manic pixie dream boy, but. Um, I don't also don't know that we've at all answered your original question about it and just now speculating on on what could be next. But yes, I don't think it makes sense for Jake to be out of school. No. Um in any in any version or any world of what happens next. I think that him having like strong uh community and like people and friends around him and like continuing to, to grow himself in whatever way possible, even if it's not in terms of like his ghost whisper and medium abilities if it's in terms of like him growing as like a regular citizen that has a high school diploma 
that 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 is more beneficial to his character than him being like at home while his mom is flying around the world um, and he's by himself looking at ecto mist um, mm. like I don't I don't I don't know I'm I'm not sure but uh, yeah, I'm I'm not sure if I answered your original question but hopefully that <laughs> adds 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 some value to it. Yeah, it, it it does. And I mean, I I want to go back to your point you made about Alistair possibly not being human. I think the only way Alistair's character would have worked for me is if Alistair was also a ghost and that was revealed in the end. Um, because there's a lot of groundwork that would have made that make sense. Alistair coming out of nowhere, mm-hmm. um, Jake having never run into Alistair prior to the meeting at school. And then uh, Alistair's perfectionism, like, uh, not perfectionism, but how perfect he is. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. All of that would have made sense if he was, like, a ghost or something. Also, we um, now that I'm thinking about it, no one interacts with Alistair outside of Fiona and Jake. Yes. So mm-hmm. it makes sense if he's a ghost and no one else can see him. Because, it may, because I would think if I was Benji, I would definitely comment on my little brother's first boyfriend. I would say something yes. about it. Oh, no, mm-hmm. not just comment, like, yeah, <laughs> har- harass, terrorize. Yeah. No, please doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I respectfully don't know if I have uh, faith in Ryan or uh, Ryan to have, <laughs> you know, crafted that kind of narrative. But if that does pop into another book, I, I will give him his, mm-hmm. his hats off because um, Elster does not make sense as a character, as a human being. Mm-hmm. So if he is some sort of fairy tale or uh, otherworldly creature. No. Or a, a fairy on Jake's A pixie, a pixie, pixie. yeah. yeah. Um, well, we'd have to add other other creatures to the world. We have wraiths and ghosts and ghouls. We haven't, we haven't introduced pixies and fairies yet. <laughs> so so that, that's a whole nother book series. Uh, a Court of, of Mist, and, Mist and Fury, A Court of Thorn and Roses, Akatar, as, as the TikTok book people call it. <laughs> I don't have to either, but I know that but all the teacher girls that I work with are currently reading that book series, and that's the the fair that's the fairy tale fairies uh, book series right now. People are reading. And then earlier, Miss Josette also says that people who die by suicide have the ability to stay in the earthly realm. So it would have made sense if it was built at the end that Alistair died by suicide, and like that's why he's able to interact with. Jake, um, I mean, that'd yeah. be juicy. Yeah, that would have made strength. for a much better story in my mind. Yeah, very much. Yeah, so. it would also make sense why there's only one other black person in the school besides Jake and Benji. Mm-hmm. And, oh, like, yeah. oh, I have to stay in the car. I can't go break into the house. I have to stay here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. take my gloves. Go. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if mm. maybe that was Ryan's original intention because there's so many things set up to make that storyline make sense. And then he kind of decided last minute not to, which is unfortunate if that's the case, but that's the only way all of these different like setups that make sense to me in the end. Um, mm. But yeah, and I guess since we all can agree we didn't love the story, what do you think could have improved <laughs> the story? <laughs> I I wouldn't say I didn't I didn't love it. I think that if I was thirteen to sixteen reading this book um, with my like level of worldview and like literary knowledge and especially my like um penchant for like the fantastical magical world that i would have found a lot more value in this than i do is a like 30 30 something um you know like grown (laughs) grown person um so like i i know when i'm reading it that i'm not the intended audience but as the not intended audience i have a lot of a lot of other thoughts that probably the intended audience would not. Um, but I, you, your your question is sorry. Before I get myself too far off track, your question is mm-hmm. what 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 would improve the story for me? Correct. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Because I I I know I sometimes have a, a habit <laughs> uh, during these discussions to start talking about something completely not related and then. Um, have have a valid point that's not uh, what what we're really talking about. But I I think some sort of like 
resolution for more of the characters would have been more impactful for me. Like if we would have seen at the end that like, I don't know, Jake got his GED and went to art school, like came, you know, like went and became a comic. Like he, he said he wanted to like draw and do art and like do cartoons and stuff. Or that like he would have had some like additional realization or I don't know, there's, you know, Jake has a father that we never see in the entire book, like some sort of like relationship there. Um, Jake's father? Yeah. The punching man? What do you mean the punching man? He's like punching him. He's giving him black eye, whatever, beaten, beaten, beaten. But he's like, oh, I found the magazines because you picked up a magazine of a trans woman. And so you are gay, punch, 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 punch. Oh, and I don't, stuff, I don't remember stuff. that. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was the whole I, thing. I just remember that like Jake's dad was talking about, or like like some some sort of resolution it's like not essentially like Jake and Benji on their own in this like POC household with no father um mm. also I don't know do we did Jake and Benji have the same dad mm, it seems so yeah okay yeah I believe so okay they just described them as so physically different that I made the assumption they did not. But again, that could be one of the things that I, especially doing the audiobook. Um, not not that this one was like, I will say more lax than some of the other books that we've read, but I just, I felt more comfortable like doing chores and working out and driving to work and listening to this one than I, than I did with a lot of the other books. <laughs> um, and I just felt like a lot of the things, a lot of the details were not that important to them in the story uh, mm. once I've gotten like 30, 40 minutes into it. But um, I, I could be wrong and again could have like missed some some important details even though I did lis listen to it twice and uh, read the actual but um, no I, I think some like resolution for for Jake in a situation would have like helped make this a better book for me um, I think some like more development or explanation like as, as you mentioned Alton, on Alistair and I also like I don't again like reading it I don't think he's human the first time <laughs> I thought I literally imagine, I don't want to say like as, as a fairy, um, especially not like in any like derogatory sense of the word, but like, I thought he was like this, like ghostly white man with blue hair the whole first time I read the book and imagine him like this pixie like state. So I think that would be uh, like an, an interesting resolution or like having some other sort of like fantastical being besides like big, the medium and Sawyer the, um, murderous, gay, uh, mm. overtaking ghost um, would have been would have been nice to see. Like added added some like closure or uh, like sense of and like like sense of sen sense of something that I I was expecting but didn't didn't get from the book. But what what would do that for? For you, I think for me the only uh, the only way to really fix the story would be to, of course, have Alistair, like I said, be a ghost. Uh, that would have made that whole character make a lot more sense. Uh, or to take out Alistair and replace all of the scenes with him and Alistair getting with Jake and Alistair getting close uh, with Jake and Benji, and like kind of building that mm -hmm. bond. I think. I think towards the end, we see that budding, like their bond budding a little bit. Um, and then it's, of course, revealed at the very end that Benji stood up for uh, Jake against his father. And that would have made more sense to me if that was revealed earlier on. Um, because knowing that at the end, I'm just so curious what caused this big rift between the two of them. If he cared so much about him at that point, why is mm -hmm. he letting the kids at school pick on Jake? Agreed. Um, yeah, and I, also, I guess I'm, it would have made sense to me, like, ha if we would have had the storyline with, um, Benji and the, I think her name is Laura, if that would have been tied up in some kind of way, we never get a resolution for that. No. Um, I didn't like and then I, okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 and I think... If this is meant to be a series or a sequel or whatever, the only way that would make sense for me is if he didn't leave school, because then I could under I could see um, the next story kind of being a Nancy Drew kind of trio with Alistair, Fiona, and Jake. But if he leaves school, then what's the point of setting all of that up? 
Um, exactly. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that is the end of my notes. Do either one of you have any plot points you want to go over? Characters, questions, comments? That's, you know, we, we picked it apart. I think we had some good notes to give to Ryan. I think we could have picked yeah. it apart even more. But oh, I certainly. Know, but. No. <laughs> um, I, while I'll say this was not my favorite book that we've read, I did enjoy, um, I, I don't want to say like the like lightness or brevity, but like the this genre in particular was a lot easier to read and especially like reflect back on now that I'm essentially twice Jake's age. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a different point of view and can like, like lend some additional thoughts to the story than I would have if I was the intended audience. So I do um, appreciate that quite a bit. Um, I didn't like love the story. There was quite a lot to be desired in multiple aspects and like character development and like relationships and world building and you know like what what happens next. Um, I would be kind of nice if this was part of a series. I don't want to do like a whole like Twilight version of Jake Livingston. I don't know that I would enjoy that. But um, you know if there is if there is something more, it might it might help me. I I don't want to say like have some appreciation for the story because I you know, I again like it's n- no small feat to write a whole novel but when Ryan Ryan Douglas did did his thing even if we didn't love it but um, so if you are listening to our YouTube or <laughs> Ryan Douglas um, you know, th- thank you but uh, um, I, don't, I would be really curious to see see what happens next because I think there's a lot of potential for what happens next or to amend some of the issues that we have with the characters in the story. Mm. Uh, and that would be really, really interesting to me, um, especially if there's more of, more as a fantasy lover, if there was more like uh, exploration of some of these like fantas- fantastical aspects, like, you know, like Jake being a ghost whisperer, which we don't really get a lot of as much as I wanted. Um, or, you know, the potential of Alistair being some otherworldly being or, like I, I would love if River had like a whole quarter of the book where she's like, oh, like Jake, this is like, you know, like th- this is how Ghost World works. Like, let me, let me mm, like be your guide or like, you know, some, some, something like that. Or like, oh, like a whole, like I get another quarter book or like Mr. Set, like something like that would be, I think, really meaningful or, or maybe like more involvement in Jake's mother. And she's like, oh, actually, I'm, I'm also a ghost whisperer. Oh my God. That's why I'm in the sky because there's no ghost up here. Um, <laughs> Just, I, 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 th- I think there, there, there is more to be desired that can really be filled in and be meaningful and build out like a whole, um, a whole series or whole or whole world that could be particularly appealing to the intended audience. But you know, like, again, also have some real, real meaning for someone. Um, more like I, I don't want to generalize. I know we're all essentially the same age. Um, or, or like someone in in our shoes that may may look back and be able to look with a more more critical or or differential point of view. But um, I don't know, I'm I'm curious to see if there's any more for Jake Livingston. So as a person who ate a lot of YA queer fiction as a teen, like I was I read every like anything that was queer in, in, in the library, I read it. I don't know. I think I think 16 or 14 or 15 or any of those teen me would have been like, girl, what on earth is going on with this book? And so I, I probably would still have read that next one if it was a series, but I would have had a lot of frustration with the character and would I don't know if I would have felt seen with Ryan's choices for the characters yeah. and the plot. Um, I, I have a question for you. I know, I know, Robert, you teach in an elementary school, so I don't I don't actually don't know what grade your school goes to, but if you have yeah. like, if, if potentially if you were a kid at eighth school and you're an eighth grader or Jonathan, I know you mentioned that you are uh, working in healthcare. If you had a patient at some point that was maybe like in this like upper, upper tweens, teens age, do you think you would recommend this book to them? <laughs> Robert, Robert says not a chance. I'm, I'm curious about you, Jonathan. I think no, simply because the two characters that I think you could possibly see yourselves in as a queer child would either be Sawyer or Jake. 
Sawyer is a school shooter who kills himself, and Jake <laughs> runs from his problems. And Jake has a habit of like not facing his issues. I don't think either one of those things are the best messages for young queer children. And they um, need the peer pressure at every turn. Drugs, yeah. alcohol, sex, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the drugs. Part. Part. Yes, the drugs and alcohol. I forgot about the alcohol part too, yes. Yes. Oh, and then him waking up and be like, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, I've never been drunk before. What did I do? <laughs> oh my gosh, did I do? Oh, I forgot. And we yes. talked about the whole revenge part thing. I forgot. I yes. Yes, oh. I would not. I have a Respectfully with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Paints my view of Jake as well. Yeah. I, w- I wouldn't want to suggest that book and then have that on my conscience if someone. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> think I would either. I have, in most of my teaching experience, I have taught uh, youth not attention. I would not want any of those kids to read this book and mm-hmm. try and try and relate to it or um, or have a similar experience. Especially like in youth not attention, where almost all the children are children children of color, and, and quite a few of them are are queer in some way or another, mm-hmm. uh, in a majority white. State, like oh no, I didn't think about how problematic some of those things are. Mm-hmm. I, I appreciate both of your both of your points of view. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, before we uh, get off the book, is there anything else either one of you want to talk about? No, very much appreciating no. your your well thought out notes and opinions and questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thank you, you too. Um, and. Uh, I think the ambulance is gone, but I will I will reiterate like I do every single month. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. I really appreciate all the effort that you put into organizing the Skype and doing mm-hmm. the stuff on book clubs and doing the Discord. Um, because I know it's it's multiple platforms and sometimes I'm the only one that shows up. But again, <laughs> uh, okay. also I do I do appreciate the, like I really I wanted another a second meeting this month because I really enjoyed what we had last month. Um, so it it does mean a lot that you were able to dive back into the book you did in October before I joined, uh, and you were willing to have a conversation about it. So, you know, thank thank you as always. Um, and I don't know if you know this or not, but on Skype I can see what I think is a little a little picture of your face that I've never seen before, and it's a very oh, yeah. nice picture. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. Well, well yeah. I, I guess I have to say thank you to you for wanting to go back to the book because our first, this club's first meeting, when I read this book, no one showed up. So <laughs> I had all these thoughts to oh. myself. <laughs> so. And that's the, pain, that's the, that's the yeah. most well, <laughs> the egregious yeah. thing of all. Six, six months later, I'm glad you were able to it's get to know. Yeah. These book and silence have no one to complain about with? Oh, <laughs> cool. I, I, don't, I don't know if Robert will read any of the next books, but um, no, I, no, I, no. I, I will say that I have, I, book club. I have not, I am in the middle of three other books, but I have not started Monstrelio because I was waiting until we had this conversation before I got into another book club book. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, was, it was just really funny because there's another book I'm reading that I don't think was intended to be queer um, or or POC, but that's like all all I'm getting from the book as I'm reading it. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll wait till I get a little bit more into it. Um, but I, I, I may have a suggestion maybe for later later in the year. It's a very long book though. It's like six to nine this so oh, wow. not 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 a twice a month uh suggestion but mm-hmm. i did i did appreciate this one and again like thank you thank you for delving in and revisiting and i know ya is probably not a genre that we want to jump into a whole whole lot for <laughs> uh, a number of complicated reasons but um just in, in every way i can express my thanks just like thank you jonathan i I, I enjoy book club and and what you do for it and and the books that you read. So, absolutely, yes. Oh, thank you so much, both of you. And that's a great segue. I guess before we go, I'll ask do either one of you have any suggestions. I know we have another meeting this month, so I won't talk about our picks for May. But anything else? Any other suggestions for books? Um, I I bought a book at my local bookstore, which is not so. I I have a local queer queer trans owned bookstore, which is not where I bought this book, but I do have a um, local like gentrified neighborhood bookstore <laughs> where I bought a book called called Babel, which I've been reading. I'm not sure if it's one to explore, but so far it seems to be about like a uh, essentially like a stolen Chinese boy um, that is like a, a boy stolen. 
Yeah, he was like stole like stolen from China, and I I'm pretty sure he's gay, and he's like essentially a slave. Oh, lovely. Um, it's also like a real like examination on like academia and like the whole Oxford culture. Oh. Um, I'm I'm not sure if that's what it's about. Again, I'm only I'm only maybe 120 pages into it. Like it's a 200 page book. I don't, but um, it feels like I'm not very far into it. But uh, it's called Babylon. Babylon. Yes. Um, and I know it has a lot of like real intentional historic. Um, like like development and the people that seem to have like there are footnotes on every other page about like if you read the encyclopedia this is what this says blah 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 oh wow um, but it, it it could be a possible one if we ever want to dive back into like a fiction novel I'm I'm not very far into it but just it's one I know I I have suggested before I'm like oh I got this book at my local bookstore and here it's where I am and it seems like kind of gay and kind of queer. Um, as this one seems that way, but it, it may not be, but I can um, let you know maybe like in the Discord if I'm like, oh, I think this is a good suggestion for a future month, but that, that's the only suggestion I have at the moment. I don't know. Do you have any, Robert? Um, no, I'm still reading the Akatar series for the, the girlies. <laughs> I, uh, teacher land. Is there... I I that book up. Do you know who the author of that story is? Of the Babylon book? I mean, yes. it's literally... If you will open my bag, Robert, it's literally in my bag. Um, it's RF. Can you just hold this up. It's RF Babylon. Cool. It's not Babylon. Yes. You said Babylon. You said Babylon. Yeah, I said Babylon. It's not Babylon. It's Babylon. And, okay. and I keep... Um, changing the Poppy War Trilogy. Oh, is this a trilogy? On um, the back, it says it's a trilogy. It's a trilogy. Oh, no. Uh, I keep changing the number of pages. It's 550 pages. Mm -hmm. But it is it is a a chunky book. It does not fit in my little <laughs> my little uh, like bag that I carry around. So. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you get further in and realize that it is a queer story, let me know. I'll do my own research just to make sure, but I'll add it to the list if it is. Okay. And I, I actually will, uh, I know we have a, uh, like, a list on Discord. I think if I if I get more into it and know that it is, like, more explicitly queer, like, it's it's obviously about a um, boy that is stolen, essentially, as a state from China. So, like, the POC part is very clear. Um, it it feels like he's falling in love with another another boy of color. Um, but if I get more into it and feel that way, I will put it in our. I know we have a recommendations chat or channel somewhere, and I'll drop it in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Well, that sounds good. Before we go, is there anything else anyone wants to talk about? Say. Sounds great to me. No, yeah, you know, did, did you have any specific like recommendations or thoughts for my books or? Um, I have hundreds. I mean, <laughs> our book club <laughs> has like, has like has 150 a books. Yeah. So, um, so no, I do have some picks for May, I guess, if you guys want to hear them early, uh, yeah. not to spoil the surprise, but uh, one, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll really enjoy, Michael. It's called Light from Uncommon Stars uh, by Reika Aoki. Uh, um, it is very similar to, um, gosh, what book was that? It's similar to The Deep in a lot of ways. It's not about mermaids. It It's like a horror slash like fantasy. It has to do with uh, making deals with the devil, selling people's souls, aliens, yes. uh, fairies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> For, for for me, that's a yes. Um, yeah. By Aoki, right? Uh, yes, uh, I believe. I'm yeah. not sure if she pronounces yeah. her name Rika or Rika, uh, but Aoki is uh, her last name. And um, Confessions of a Mask. I'm assuming next month we'll probably do two books again, um, because they are both about 300 pages, a little shorter. Um, the second one is Confessions of a Mask by uh, Yukio M Mishima. Um, that is not fantasy. It's uh, it's like semi -auto uh, autobiographical. Um, he was like a 
very important political figure in Japan in the 80s. Um, and he wrote this book partially about his life, but he wrote it from a gay man's perspective. Um, mm -hmm. And it's debated whether or not in real life he was actually gay, um, because there are a lot of similarities between mm -hmm. the main character and his own life. Uh, married to a woman, having two children, but secretly being gay. Um, mm -hmm. And then, so yeah, I don't know. I, I know it's it gets quite political, I've heard. Um, again, he was a political figure, so I guess that's to be expected, but yeah. Well, for my my very quick Google while you discussed, I'd like both of those. Um, if you want to do two again next month, I will. Oh, I think second, um, just no, knowing my schedule ahead of time, I think second Saturday is May 11th. Um, I know that I probably will not be available at 3 p.m. my time. Oh, May 11th, no. wait, it's a Saturday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So twelfth would be fine. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, Sunday. Today's Sunday. That's okay. And if you want to go back to one book, we can do that too. We don't have to do two. That's fine. Oh, I, I enjoy two. I I asked for a second one this month because I like really enjoyed the last month having two. Um, mm. and again, I'm like trying to like recruit, recruit more people. Um, <laughs> especially the, the those that I think will have you know like a lot a lot to uh. That's what we have to say. But no, I, if we can do two next month, that would make me happy. But you are uh, you are the boss, so that's all up to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's all I have, and I believe you said that's all you two have. So, I guess yeah. that's it. Um, thank you both for coming, of course, and I hope to see you two again in two weeks to discuss Montreal. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I'm excited. Thank you, thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you, Jonathan. You both have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye.